<laughs> I want you to say, that gets my goat. That gets my goat. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back. What were we talking about? We were talking about movies, as we are wont to do. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. You really need to get on that diet, sir. The chair just made a funny noise. Yeah, I'm sure it was the chair. Uh, so let's continue talking about Captain America, okay? Off we go. Uh, I, I don't even know where to start on Captain America, because... It was like a big epic that took place over a period of years, and they managed to fit the whole freaking World War II in there. But I could have used another hour. I could have used another movie. Mm -hmm. I could have used a trilogy of movies set in World War II. And then it's like, okay, once we've finished with 1945 and the war is over, then if you guys want Captain America in the 21st century, you can have him. I, I was sort of hoping that they would do that, that they would say, okay, these Cap movies are World War II-centric. But the Avengers movies are modern day, and we can have our cake and eat it too. I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's hard for uh, people to swallow, unfortunately. And that's true. That you know, folks they have like to you see and them. I would be like, oh yeah, fine. But majority of people that go to see movies, and the reason why these movies make a bazillion dollars is because a lot more than just the geeks are going to see them. And that's true. In a, a world where you make a two hundred million dollar Captain America movie, way more than just the geeks have to go see them. In a world, in a world where you make more than a two hundred million dollar Captain America movie, <laughs> it, it, to me it was kind of a shame that we didn't get to see more. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted more of everything except for the damn two thousand eleven stuff. Right. But honestly, looking at the way the world works, we're lucky we got a World War Two movie at all. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure there were pencil pushers and douchebags and analysts and stuff that were like. No way will a 13-year-old boy go see a movie set in the 40s. You know what I mean? Why, why don't you put a Tool song over the, <laughs> the trailer for Captain America? And they're like, oh. Uh. Did you notice that there was a fucking Tool song over a World War II movie? Anyway, sorry. Wasn't it uh, on your blog where you said that your friend's kids found Thor to be more believable than Captain America? Because, you know. Well, Thor was based Thor's in Norse gods are real. And uh, th this World War II thing, it's all fantasy. Yeah, it's just there are some people that shouldn't be allowed to have children. <laughs> and I'm probably one of them because yes. I would do stuff like that too. I would be like, my grandpa saw Captain America when he went into Germany in 1944. Captain America was on the same troop transport as, as grandpa was. And he didn't get to talk to him or get his autograph or anything like that, but he saw him. And that was enough to carry with him through all the horrible battles and things that he had when it... I, you know, I would do that kind of crazy ass stupid stuff. You tried to get me to do that to people at work. You wouldn't. You said, yeah, as soon as somebody starts talking about Captain America, you tell them that your grandpa served in his unit. <laughs> I, I, I sort of hold all these characters sacred, as you know, and as anybody that's listened to that gets my goat knows. This stuff is beyond just funny books or you know a bunch of cartoons that I saw when I was a kid or whatever. It's just like I believe in Harvey Dent. I believe in these characters. You know, Spider-Man is going to be 50 next year. So he's been around longer than I have. He'll be around after I'm gone. And the, the things that he taught me about morality or about responsibility or about, you know, getting up after you've fallen are things that have, I think, made me into a better person. And so that to me is as valid as any you know, religious teaching or a teaching that an uncle gave you or, you know, your pastor, your molester, your, your dad, whatever it is, you know, something that shaped me into who I am now. And so the whole Captain America thing really, it, it resonates with me because I also love World War II. Right. And I did have a grandpa that, that fought in World War II. And I'm, I'm totally fascinated with that period of time. Now, granted, I'm a little more Hitler-centric than anybody else I know, but I just... Hey, I knocked out Hitler over 200 times. Yes, yes, you did. You know a little bit about fighting Nazis. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful that they gave it a chance, a movie that, A, took place you know, in an era that none of the people that the movie was made for can remember, and then two that they didn't do it in a really smart ass, hey, folks, this is just a silly movie, this is just a comic book way. They hired Chris Evans 
And I didn't know that that was a good choice at the time because it seemed like hiring Ryan Reynolds for a part like that. You know? Chris <laughs> right. Evans is a surfer. He's a smart ass. He, he can't take anything seriously. Oh, and maybe this movie won't either. But he played it 100% straight. And I think all of them did. Mm-hmm. I can't remember a single character that was a wink at the camera, you know. There was that one time when Red Skull looked at the camera and then rolled his eyes. That's that's true. And then Arnim Zola made that jerk off. The jerking off m- yeah, motion. Yeah, that was... <laughs> Sorry. But <laughs> but it, you kind of expect that from Red Skull, so. And it, it would be easy. You know, when you're dealing with stuff like Super Soldier Serum and the Cosmic Cube and Hail Hydra and all that stuff, it's easy to say that this is lame and this is dumb or that it's for kids. But I think that the film tried to do it very faithfully, very soberly, and it was really good for it. And so I appreciate that. And now, you know, in the Avengers, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of laughs because Joss Whedon, he's good at that. And some of those characters are that way. I mean, Iron Man has always been, uh, you know, all of his films have been that way. And so, you know, his character's going to carry through. And um, yeah, maybe we should talk about that for a minute. If you just think about all of these characters from the Avengers, I don't know, which is the one that's going to respect Captain America the most? And I would imagine that it would be Nick Fury because he's a military guy, Right. And I, he wasn't – the movie Nick Fury wasn't in World War II, right? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I'm asking you like you know, but it's just – wouldn't they have established that in the World War II scenes if it was the same Nick Fury? Because like the, the team that Cap led were the Howling the, Commandos and that was Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos. Do you know that G.I. Joe was uh, originally invented to be a con- Vietnam version of uh, those guys? It was supposed to be like their children and I think the main – Leader was going to be uh, somebody Fury, and he was supposed to be uh, his son. And now he led them into Vietnam. I think I did read that, and it was Larry Hama, right? Wasn't right. he the guy that created G.I. Yeah. Joe? As we he know was it. trying to trying to get it, and Marvel wouldn't go for it. And then they got the uh, the G.I. Joe license, the deal for G.I. Joe, and he said, and they're like, okay, we want you to do that. And he says, you know, I'm just going to make them exactly what I pitched to you last year that you wouldn't let me do. And like, all right, fine. And so that's what G.I. Joe came from. Shoot, what was I going to say? Okay, oh, so just, I, I'm sorry, I was talking about the, the Avengers. I don't know. It, it's something I've not talked about on the show, but I've talked to you. I've talked to anybody that will listen. If there were really a Captain America, people would idolize that guy as though he had been a god. You know, if it, there really was a soldier, a representative of our flag, of our country, against our darkest enemies, decades ago... That, that would be something that people could latch onto, could say, that's patriotism, or that's the ideal, or that's what I strive to be, or that's what I want my kids to look up to and all that. And granted, there would be people that would make the hand gesture about <laughs> that and say, you know, nobody could be that good and all that. Or there was never really a Captain America. It was just a, a whole bunch of people that would put on the costume And, you know, when that guy got killed, they'd put the costume on another guy and all that so that Americans back home and kids could have something to believe in. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we're in a cynical as hell society today, a a very cynical, hard to uh, accept time. And for some reason, we love to see our heroes fall. Right. We love to see people that, that you love get knocked down and spat upon because I think it helps us say, well, okay. He wasn't really that good. Then I don't have to feel like I don't have to hold myself up to an ideal, right? And all that. It's it's human nature, I think. Yeah. But it is sad that that's the world we live in. And and somebody like Tony Stark, who's so flawed, and yet Captain America knew his father and owes his existence in part to his father, right? And all that stuff. To me, that's just okay. That that's an avenue for a ton of fun and drama and interesting arguments and conversations. And Nick Fury seems like he could be somebody that could almost be a mentor to Captain America who says, you know, I'll take you and explain how the world works and all that, you know, if you'll, if you'll trust me, if you'll listen to me, you know, I, I know that you're a good man and all that stuff. And, and I don't know. I mean, Thor is a, is a god and right. he's not from this world. Yeah, I just, it's so strange to me that he's even on the team, the, the movie Thor. You know what I mean? I can, I can see that he sort of made a connection with Agent Coulson. Mm-hmm. But 
seems like if you come back to Earth, the first thing you're doing is going to look for Natalie Portman. <laughs> That's pretty much what I've been doing all this time I've been on the Earth. Oh, cool. It's not working out for me, though. It's harder than you would think. <laughs> That's so. funny. And uh, so who else do we have? We have Hulk. And who knows on Hulk, too, because they've got a new actor. Yeah, new actor. It's going to be all new reboot of Hulk. But maybe it's the exact same Hulk that we saw in the 2008 movie. Let's just say that it is. Can can Banner trust anyone? Can he trust himself? Can Would Bruce Banner get along with Captain America? I don't know. It depends on what they're going to do with the Hulk. Is the Hulk going to be... Uh the enemy that they have to stop or is he going to be part of the team is it good or bad this uh hulk i don't know and i I, in a way i don't want to know i want to just uh, jump forward a year and go see a movie but by the time that comes out we'll know so 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 much well you will and i'll tell you because i (laughs) have to ruin a good thing ruin why must you ruin Uh um yeah there's hawkeye and Hawkeye is a cipher. Who knows what's what? Yeah, he's he's just and and there's uh, Black Widow who will be in the film. We saw a few shots of her in that post credits trailer. Yeah. Which, gosh, that was an interesting uh, choice. I thought it was interesting because we sat there waiting for the final scene that you always get in a Marvel movie, and it just goes right into the trailer. Yeah, I, I would have much rather had a coda. And just because if you recall, it said Captain America will return in the Avengers. That's all I would have needed. And then yeah. just have some have the dance. But, you know, that's just me. I, I know there are people that are just frothing at the mouth to see part of the Avengers and all that. But once you get to be our age, a year goes by in a blink. Yeah. That movie will be on video before I get this thing edited. <laughs> um, and, yeah, with with Black Widow... It's hard for me to separate her from the actress because I've, I've happened to think that Scarlett Johansson is kind of a limited actress. Mm-hmm. But did she have a personality? What did what we saw in Iron Man 2, was that her just pretending to work for Tony Stark so it was all a persona? And the chick that beat up guys in the hallway was the real Black Widow? But... Yeah, I don't know. I wonder how big of a part she'll have because she's – just a chick that can beat people up she doesn't have a superpower right i mean i don't know black widow well she doesn't have a superpower does she no not really i mean she's she's super old (laughs) i mean you know she's long lived like nick fury or wolverine or cap okay but that's that's as far as i mean she's a really great gymnast she has these little firing rocket things on her wrists that is power but that's that's a technology right. kind of thing. I guess uh, Iron Man doesn't really have a superpower either. But uh, no, and nor does Hawkeye. He's awful uh, tough with that whole suit. Hawkeye's just a really good marksman. Yeah, well, he's got trick arrows, so maybe there's some cool stuff with that. But I I don't know because I, in in the comics I don't really know Hawkeye all that well. And I don't know how they're going to do it. I mean, they certainly didn't go with the purple suit. So maybe it's going to be just a, a whole new take on Hawkeye. But to have one girl on the Avengers, is she expected to be the love interest of one of the characters, do you think? And if so, who? Yeah, I don't know. I would guess Iron Man, just because she comes from his timeline, <laughs> his sequel. I guess so, but he had... But yeah, he does have Pepper Potts. Pepper Potts. See, that's funny. I couldn't remember. He had uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, yeah. who's sort of his love interest. See, again, if you're the guy that's running the Avengers movie, can you say, okay, then Tony is talking to Pepper Potts in this scene. Well, you know, We need to borrow Gwyneth Paltrow for one day of shooting. Or are all of those things sort of off limits? It's like, hey, let's just keep the main guys in here. We don't want to pay her you know, $3 million for one day's work because that's what her contract says. Yeah, I mean, I, w- I would think that their contracts, you know, they have to be signed to them and stuff. Wasn't Samuel L. Jackson signed to a... Eight-picture deal. Yeah, an eight-picture deal, but he's already done, like, six of those pictures already because he had a cameo in this one and that one and the other one. The, the neat thing about that Jackson deal was that they paid him nothing for Iron Man. I know, nothing for you and me. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> right. But, you know, I mean, it was scale, that kind of thing. And their deal with the eight pictures was each film is like exponentially higher paycheck than the last. 
And so he still didn't get a lot for Iron Man 2 and, he, you know, and all that. But he got more. He wasn't, was he in Thor? He was in Thor. He yeah, got he more was. for Thor and then he got more for Captain America. And he gets more for the Avengers until, you know, eventually on that seventh and eighth movie, he'll be making a ton of money. But I guess there was always a possibility that those eight movies wouldn't happen. Right. But at the same time, you know, hopefully Marvel Studios will be bringing in exponentially more money. You know, five movies down the line, they don't just make whatever they're making from Iron Man 3 and Thor 2 and Captain America 2. They're still making money off Iron Man and Incredible Hulk and, and Avengers and, and, you know, Captain America 1 and all that, right? Isn't that right. how that should be working? So the coffers should be replenished more and more and more the, the bigger their library is. Yeah, that is uh, kind of the way it is. It's kind of a magic bakery kind of a thing. Is that what your buddy uh, Wesley Dean Anderson, Dean, Dean Wesley, Dean Smith, Wesley yeah. Smith said? Was his thing is a magic bakery where you sell a piece of the pie. And then the pie comes back to and you. And then later it comes back to you and you get to sell it again. That's so cool. <laughs> In theory. So, uh, shoot, what was I saying? about? Uh, we were talking about Black Widow. We were talking about Pepper Potts. Uh, did you get any attraction between Black Widow and, and Iron Man? There's that scene in the trailer where he's showing her how to use the repulsor, whatever. Uh -huh. He lets her put on his glove and that. It wasn't in the movie, but you still see images from that all the time. Like when the Netflix ads would be like, rent Iron Man 2. You'd see that image and I'd be like, damn it, that's not even in the movie. That, that, <laughs> you, you should be fined for doing that. <laughs> I think she was supposed to be the one who made Gwyneth Paltrow jealous all along. You know, that she was supposed to be that foil or whatever to her huh. and tony's relationship so i don't know that you could say that there was necessarily attraction or not but uh you know it's supposed to be kind of that she's the third wheel she's the kickstand did tony and pepper get together at the end of iron man 2 i want to say that they gosh what because at iron man 1 they don't yeah. They're still friendly. They still work together, but there's there's chemistry there, and it doesn't get realized. Exploited. Yeah, I don't remember. I haven't seen that movie since we saw it in theaters. Okay, I did see it a second time. I've got it uh, recorded on my uh, TiVo right now because I was going to show it to the kids, but I haven't yet. So <laughs> if only I'd watched that instead of that G.I. Joe movie with them, then I would be... Uh, You'd be able to tell uh, me. Yeah, exactly I'd be cool. right up to speed and I'd be able to tell you everything that happened. I wasn't thrilled with Iron Man 2. Yeah. A at the time, I think I said, oh, it was a worthy sequel. It was really good. But the second time I saw it, it just felt like really cluttered and jumbled together. And like the deadline was approaching and they didn't get a chance to do a second draft, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, it's my least favorite of all those Marvel Studios films. But I'll definitely go see Iron Man 3. Right. I love the character. I think Robert Downey Jr. is great as Tony. And uh, just seeing a glimpse of all of those guys at the end of Avengers, uh, I don't really need to see them all fighting some, you know, Skrull army or Thanos or Loki or, or Hulk or MODOK or any of that stuff. I just like all of them hanging out together and interacting <laughs> right. and talking and, you know, Captain America making some comment and... Tony saying, you know, women have the vote now. <laughs> you know, so like that. Whoa, your computer just made a funny noise. And last time when it made this noise, it meant it was freezing up. Maybe we should stop talking and we'll pick up on our conversation next week. What do you think? Sure. Talk to you later, folks. I'm Big Anklevich. Yeah, hey, I'm Rish. I guess, shoot, I can't remember my last name. Good night. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. But it really shouldn't be. So, yeah, did you see the, uh, I'm a Mac, uh, or, no, sorry, I'm a Marvel and I'm a DC thing for Captain America? Well, uh, last week we watched something. Uh, oh, where, okay, where yeah. all of them were like, 
Like Hulk is like, oh, right. Captain America, best man Hulk ever known. Right. That was, I, I thought that was kind of funny because one of the things that Green Lantern, you know, because they, they spar back and forth about doing stupid things with each other's movies and whose movie is better than the other. And so Green Lantern is trying to take down Cap, I guess, a little bit, although he doesn't want to. But the other guys attack him and force him to. And one of the things he says, oh, all right. Well, how about the stupidity of opening a geek-centric movie on the one day of the year that all the geeks are out of town? Which I think is kind of funny because that's exactly what happened to you. You were out of town at the one place where all the geeks went. And... uh, we had to see it uh, later on. 